My dear brothers and sisters, I greet you warmly, although virtually, looking forward to the time when we can meet together oft in person, wherever and in whatever numbers we choose. With all the brethren, I pay, pray for your health and safety and for hope and happiness in your life day by day. We have some important concepts we want to communicate to you today in a setting where you can discuss their significance and application. I have a few introductory thoughts and the General Authority 70s who comprise the Utah Area Presidency will present the substance of our message. You may or may not be aware that the Church has divided the world up into 22 areas, geographic areas, for purposes of better organizing and supervising the work. Depending on the density of Church population, some areas cover multiple countries, such as the Asia area, or the Europe area, or the Central America area. Some cover a single country, such as Brazil or Mexico, where church population is well over a million in each country. The United States and Canada together are divided up into six areas, and with the concentrated number of members and stakes and missions here, Utah is an area in itself. Each of the 22 areas is presided over by an area presidency, consisting of three 70s, occasionally joined by a fourth 70, as is the case with the Utah area at present. Each area presidency is assisted by any number of area 70s as they interact with stake, mission, and temple presidents and other leaders. In Utah, 31 area 70s have been called and are serving at present. Ultimately, the area presidencies report to the First Presidency and Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. But for day-to-day -day supervision, one member of the Twelve and one or two members of the Presidency of the Seventy are assigned to each area. Currently, I'm assigned to oversee or be first contact in the Twelve for the Utah area and Elders Patrick Kieran and Carlos Godoy of the Presidency of the Seventy assist me. All these assignments rotate or change from time to time, including the assignments that members of the Seventy receive to serve in a particular area presidency. Because I've been an especially good boy, it's now my turn to serve with the Utah area. I'm grateful to be accompanied in this presentation today by all four members of the Utah Area Presidency, each of whom will speak to you. They are Elder Kevin W. Pearson, Area President, and his counselors, Elder Evan A. Schmutz, Walter F. Gonzalez, and Bainia Sikahema. Bainina Sikahema. As Elder Pearson has mentioned, they will be discussing the vision and priorities we have for the Utah area. Having reviewed their presentations, I want you to know that I endorse what they will be saying and teaching. The organization of the Church into areas, as I've been describing, is key to aligning our efforts everywhere in the world with the prophetic counsel of the First Presidency and Quorum of the Twelve. In section 107 of the Doctrine and Covenants, the Lord emphasizes that the primary duty of the Apostles is to serve as special witnesses of the name of Christ in all the world. And the Seventy are also appointed to be a special witnesses unto the Gentiles and in all the world. After that first and transcendent obligation to be witnesses, the Revelation states that the Twelve are to officiate in the name of the Lord under the direction of the presidency of the Church, to build up the Church, and regulate all the affairs of the same in all nations. Then it states that the Seventy are to act in the name of the Lord under the direction of the Twelve in building up the Church and regulating all the affairs of the same in all nations. You can see that the Seventy are essentially an extension of the Twelve in testifying of Christ 
and in building up and regulating the affairs of the church. In a subsequent verse in section 107, it states that the 12 are to call upon the 70 instead of any others when they need assistance. Thus, at the outset, the keys of the first presidency and the 12 are aligned as the 12 act under the direction of the presidency in building up and regulating the church. Then the 70 are brought under that umbrella as they act under the direction of the 12. The 70s serving in and with area presidencies extend that alignment of keys and direction to the leaders of stakes, missions, temples, wards, branches, quorums, and the other organizations of the church in each area. In this way, we can enjoy an incomparable unity in the work of the Lord. There's obviously room for adjustment and adaptation, or what the Lord calls the differences of administration, according as the Lord will, suiting his mercies according to the conditions of the children of men. But overall, we have a uniform vision and approach in gathering the Lord's covenant people on both sides of the veil and in ministering to one another as we pursue the covenant path toward eternal life. We're able to preserve and apply the gospel of Jesus Christ in its purity and to act in the power of his priesthood to accomplish his purposes in this great and last dispensation. Anciently, the Church of Jesus Christ was able to maintain this unity of belief and effort for some period of time, but it could not be sustained without the keys of the priesthood. With the restoration of the priesthood and its keys and the gospel and Church of Jesus Christ, God's work of salvation and exaltation is renewed, this time with the promise of ultimate success. For our own efforts in the Lord's cause to succeed in our stakes and wards and homes, it will be important to keep things as simple as possible. Complex approaches that require excessive time and means are not sustainable. We can't confuse busyness and tasks with spiritual growth and conversion. That is why, as you'll see, the Utah Area Presidency is focused on a few priorities that are simple, easily understood, and realistic. I'm grateful to be joined with you in what President Russell M. Nelson has called the greatest cause and work on the earth. I never tire of bearing witness that it is the work of the Lord Jesus Christ and that he guides it personally. He is the risen, living Redeemer. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is his kingdom on earth, preparing for his kingdom in heaven to come. May the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the grace of Jesus Christ and the influence of the Holy Spirit be with each of you every day, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.